Make sure to log into the IRC channel. There's another sneaky way to set up the IRC channel, and I'm not going to go into it. I'll leave it in the notes. And if you want to try it out inside of Emacs, it's in one of the videos, and I'll show you that in a minute. Let me close up this because I'm going to stay on virtual machine today. All right, so this is going to be lecture nine today. We're going to cover a few more fun things, I hope. We're going to actually, if we can get to it, use QGIS, Google Earth, and we're going to see a movie in Firefox, if we can get to it. So I'm hoping we move from the land of getting things just sort of settled and learning our way around Unix to digging into some data. So go ahead and go to the Research Tools web page. I'm going to show you a few new things on this web page to start off with. Hopefully some of them will help you out. One of which is the playlist here on YouTube. I've set up, so far there's four videos I've recorded that are basically screencasts where I use the computer. I record the screen so you can see all my mouse movements. You can see me screw up. Hopefully I don't mumble too much because I don't edit those at all. It shows me going through Emacs using the keyboard, trying to avoid the mouse in the first one completely. And in the later ones, I do use the mouse some, but I, I try to walk through some of the major topics with Emacs. If you're feeling uncomfortable with, with that, you can always go back and take a look at those and refresh your brain on Emacs if, you haven't, if you're having trouble with something. I've started screen captures. I'm creating screen captures, and one of the new things on here is if we look here on the right, for lecture eight, which was last week, I actually ran a screen grabber that grabbed my screen every few seconds, and I created a PDF. It's about 50 slides for the class, so you can see what was on the screen. If you're listening to the audio, you can bring up, there's a PDF, a keynote, and a PowerPoint, and they just have screen grabs so you can see what it looked like. So let me start that up for this class. So now it's capturing. So if I go too fast, you guys should stop me because it's also not getting recorded. It only does every 10 seconds. So if I go zooming through something, we're going to miss out on some captured material. So here are the four videos. They're either is that playlist or you can see them individually. I'll try and upload the actual video files so you can have them too. Uh, I want you to be able to take this with you at the end of class. So when you're done at the end of the semester, this material is supposed to help you for the rest of your career. So you should be able to take it all with you. What else is new on here? So there's the movie, the YouTube, uh, the audio files, and that's it. So what we need to do today, first off, is start off by grabbing the org mode file for lecture nine. Is everyone logged into the IRC before I forget? Make sure you say hello, use it for chat. I can't see it, so wave your hand if you need any help. If you ask in the IRC, I won't be able to see it unless I remember to jump over there. Okay, so right click on this org file and save link as. You're welcome to save it wherever. I'm gonna save it in my home directory, save. And I'm going to go over to Emacs. Since the virtual machine stuff at the top tends to hide it, Emacs is under Applications, Accessories, and then GNU Emacs 23. Now, if Emacs ever gets completely stuck during class today, feel free to just kill it and reopen it, go find the file again, and get started right from where you left off. Sometimes there's modes that we don't totally understand yet as we're going through it, and we'll get stuck. So just Feel free to click that close button, kill it, and we'll get right back into it. So I'm going to go open that file. I'm going to use directory edit mode. I'm going to do control X, control F for find file. You're also welcome to use the menus. And I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to do a control S for search and type nine and a dash and a control S to keep going until I see it. So here's my bash scripting.org. And I'm going to make this big because we're going to be doing most of our stuff in Emacs today. I'm going to try and keep you guys focused in Emacs unless we're popping up Google Earth, QGIS, or Firefox to view some end results. We're going to try and stay as much as possible inside of the text editor. So today we're going to go through creating, setting up org babble for us, which is a mode inside of Emacs org mode where we can actually run code from what we're writing. So imagine writing like a Word document, but your second paragraph is actually code that you click on and it actually runs your analysis. We're gonna do that kind of thing in here. And we're gonna look at a little bit of data, make a, a Google Earth model question. Great. Uh, to, uh, to open the glass, uh, like glass 
nine. Yep, what you can do is control X, control F. Control X. So you have a control X already, yep. Now just hit enter for the current directory. And see, and now you can scroll down with the arrow keys. So just use the arrow keys, these guys. Okay. So you get down to the nine. And now press enter. There you go. Now if you have a split screen, control X and then a one is your unsplit the screen. Control X, one, unsplit. And pretty soon you guys are going to get used to this. You need to this either. Very complicated. All this crazy okay. header stuff. The org mode header stuff I have in here sets up the formatting, the table of contents. It's just to make it look nicer. You only need like two or three of those lines. Yeah, so at the very bottom, yeah, we'll see that as part of the homework assignment. So click in the window that you want to keep. Now type control X one and that'll be the only window left. It's the one says like, hey, I'm I'm the main guy. Okay, you've opened up a shell. You can also just do control X, control F. Now hit enter. Now scroll down to the nine. Not not with the mouse, but with the keyboard. Or yep, that'll work. Click. Now uh, you download the HTML file rather than the org file. Go back to your web browser. Now make sure that you're not downloading that HTML file. There's the little org link on the right. Right click on the org link, save that link. And that's the link that you want to use. The HTML file is full of formatting stuff that won't help you out unless you want to actually view it in Firefox or something. See the org thing? Press right click the mouse. Nope. Right click, save link as, and now hit save. Thank you. Now remember, if you guys are in directory edit mode in Emacs, so click in your window here. If your directory edit mode is out of date, press G and it will refresh the directory listing. Save link as, save. Go over to your Emacs, control X, control F. It started with the number nine for the lecture number. Just press nine, nine. and then tab. And then at ORG, press enter. And now do a control X one. I would highly recommend for this class making Emacs as big as you can reasonably do. Question? Okay, that's a great question. So last time we started off and we ended up with the same file in two views. So you may want to do that today. What we did then, if you have one window open, so you say you do a control X one, so you have the buffer you want. Then you do a control X two. So it's the number two and that's split. And that'll split it and it'll be the same, same file here and here. Or if you want to do control X three, that'll split this way. So it'll cut left and right if you want to see left and right. But these monitors make that kind of tough. They're small. Did you press the G in there to refresh your listing? And now do a control S, control X one, yep. Okay, now do a nine and a dash, uh, and then B A. So go ahead and do control X one. So let's see a little bit better. Make Emacs be the full screen. Click the, the box up there. Let's just take over the whole screen with Emacs. Now press the letter G. No control, just the letter G. So now as you see it just appear there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you hold down control, it's something completely different. So in Dured mode, if you want to refresh your directory listing, just type G. So now scroll to that 9 dash that one or click on it, yep. And then do control X1. And that'll make it take over your whole screen. I highly recommend before Thursday, take a look at those videos. They're about an hour and 15 minutes of watching me go through it. So you can see sort of how I work with Emacs and get a refresher of all the commands. I try to say them as I do them. Only the first one, I ran out of gas after putting all the little YouTube labels of here's what I type. So the first one's got some of those labels for about 15 minutes. So hopefully it'll help you. It'll show what keys I typed as I say them. Here's a link to org babble, which is going to really help us out for the rest of class. We'll skip th past that. We talked about the extra content. The videos I did are modeled after this website called Show Me Do. So there's lots of other videos there if you're interested, all of sort of a similar style. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to set up org babble. This is going to let us run code inside of Emacs. So you'll be able to run the examples that, that are in the class notes without leaving the class notes. And if we do it right now, there's the keystroke is right here. It's control C, control C inside of a code block. You're going to get an error that looks like this line right here. 
where it says no org babel execute function for sh. It's kind of a crazy message, but if I type pound plus begin source sh, pound plus end source, and I type echo hello, I'm going to go ahead and press control C, control C. This is going to ask me, do I want to run this code? And if you don't keep up on this one, don't worry too much. We'll, we'll do a lot of this today. I'm going to type the word yes, press enter, and it worked. Bugger. It should have said that error message. Unfortunately, it looks like I set up my Emacs and forgot to unset it up. So we'll have to uh, overwrite what I did. But if you go down to this Emacs lift section, I'm going to split my window in two. And in this one, the top one, I'm going to press on link Emacs. So I actually linked to, by using the tilde slash dot Emacs, I've linked to your dot Emacs. So if you click on that link, you're going to go to a different file than me. So if I click on it, I hope, oh, there we go. And I don't look yet. I'm going to hide all this and pretend that I'm starting back at the beginning with you. Your dot Emacs will look like this. It will be nothing. It may say something about the file doesn't exist. So double click on your dot Emacs. And you'll have a file that's empty or doesn't exist. We're going to go copy everything in this block that says begin source Emacs list. And this is a configuration file that I don't want you to worry about. The idea here is it should have been an Emacs. It should have already been set up, but we're just going to copy it. So control space on the first line. And you'll see it's now highlighting as I move down to right before the end source. And I'm going to press the escape key for meta, escape, and then W for copy. And now it's saved a whole bunch of text. Control X and then O. Also, it's also, yeah, there's, there's multiple ways to do it. So you can hold down Alt and then press the key that's the meta. So meta W is copy. And if you get stuck, wave your hand. Right. So control X2 to split your window, the number two. Yep. And so then you can click on the .emacs file. See that .emacs? Now you can use the mouse to click on that. And CY is yank, AKA paste. Who's actually got it? We got a couple successes, all right. By the end of this class and the next one, hopefully this will be get easy because we'll keep doing a lot of this stuff. Do we need to have the begin SRC in it too? Keep the begin and the end SRC out of it. Oh, if you've yeah. accidentally copied it, you can just delete it. So you're doing a control X O with only one window open. So you need to split control X two, control X, and then the number two. Now uh, control X B to jump to the other buffer. You've edited that file. So yeah, control X and then a B. Control X and then a B. Switch to buffer. Now press enter. So now you can paste in there. Paste is, yep, yeah, edit, paste. If you want to save it, you can either do it from the menu or it's control X, control S to save. And feel free to type in hints. Those are done into the IRC. That means you've already saved. There's no stars, so it means you're all, see how you've got stars there? That means this one's been edited a little bit and this one has been saved and there's no stars, so it's all good. What did it save it to though? It saved it as your .emacs file. Um, yep, save that buffer. Control X, Control S. I'm going to teach you all a command. If you're stuck, this will help you out. Um, if you're in the middle of your file and you've really uh, deleted a bunch of text and you went, oh my gosh, I don't want that, and your file's been saved, like if you're editing the class examples and it's just completely messed up, an easy one is like you highlight a big region of text and you bump the delete key. Meta, X, and then you have to type out revert dash buffer. It's a weird command, but what it does is it says, okay, I'm going to go back to the disk, I'm going to reread the file, and I'm going to throw out all the changes and start over from the disk. I use this one a lot. So especially if you're co copying and pasting and you delete something you want, it's easy to just do a revert buffer. So meta X, hold down Alt, press X, while well, holding Alt, yeah. So now you see the meta X, now type revert, revert dash buffer, press Enter. Uh, it says, do you want to revert? You say, you bet, type Y-E-S. Yes. Now you're back to the original file without changes. Are you having trouble copying that in? So go to the beginning of the line where you're at this semicolon. Yeah. So yeah, grab, just use the, the keyboard. We'll forget about the mouse for a little bit. 
So you're going to go back up to where you, um, to the .emacs section. So do a control X1. I would put away the mouse. The mouse is just too much trouble. So control X and then a one. Control X and then just the number one. So scroll down with the arrow keys. Just use the arrow keys, yep, until you see the Emacs section. Okay, so go right to here, right before the semicolon, after the begin, down. Yep, right there. Control space, mark set. Okay, good. Now use the arrow keys So and scroll down. See how it's highlighting now? Now you want to be right above the end source. Now down one more line. Perfect. Hit escape and let go. Now it's going to show you the escape. That's the same as meta. Now do the W for the copy. We're going to copy that. So, so just press a W by itself. Perfect. Now go open that Emacs file. So double click the Emacs up there with the mouse. Now you definitely can use the mouse. OK, great. Go into here. Click in there. Now you can just do edit paste. Just go up to edit paste. I'm going to do a control X and then an O. Control space. And then I'm going to go down. Now I do an escape. W to copy. Control X. O to go to the other window. I'm going to just get rid of that a little bit. And now I'm going to do a control Y to paste. So it's there. And so now I'm going to do a file save. Okay, you copied one line too much in the beginning. You can always do click in this mini buffer. Okay. Now press Control G to quit. Control G. Control G. Yeah. So now you can always go up to buffers and select your .emacs. It's a meta. So hold on Alt and then W. And now click another one and Control Y for Yang. Now you can save it under File Save or Control X Control S S. So now that you've all done that, close Emacs. We're done. No. I do want you to close Emacs. We're going to restart it. It's the easiest way to reload this configuration file. So we've set up Emacs so that it can now run source code for us inside. Hang in there, guys. We're almost there. So I'm going to and just do File, Quit, or Control X, Control C. It might ask you a lot of questions. Uh, do I want to save my .emacs? I need to save mine. OK, so Control X, Control C. And it may ask you yes, no, and you have to answer based on what you've got. And restart Emacs. And we're all going to see who succeeded. Hopefully all of us. So we're going to start up Emacs now. It should have Babel opened. So I can do Control X, Control F, and I'm going to go 9 dash hit tab. And I'm going to reopen that bash script org. Yeah, yeah, you can just press Y. It's asking you, do you want to save? So yes. press Y. Yes. And uh, here you want to say N for no. N. Yep. Uh, type yes. You do want to exit anyway. So Y E S. Okay. Now restart Emacs. You can just click that little button right there. And if you open up that org file that I've got down at the bottom, we're going to scroll back down to where we were. And just go right below that bit of text. And there's this section here, Control L brings things to the middle. And go to the testing section. We're going to test what's going on here. You got it going, you can actually try the test. It's Control C, Control C inside of that echo shell command. Uh, you've opened up a different file. You, you open up a, so Control X and then a K. Yeah, that'll work. And then Control G. Always good to do, no, sorry, just a G, just the letter G. Uh, just, just G, no control. OK, so that's the right file. Press Enter. OK, you're good. So now scroll down to the testing section. Control G. And why don't you just go ahead and open directory edit mode? It might be easiest. So Control X, Control F. Control X, Control F. OK, excellent. Now just do 9 and press tab if it's in your home directory. Why Perfect. I there? Yeah, I think you were, you were Was doing I somewhere some, else? You had another different prompt, so you must have hit some other slightly different key. I'm not sure what you did. Okay. But now you're good. Oftentimes just going back through it, I you did something you did, like you bumped a key you didn't realize or and then search oh. for testing. Now, you're in highlight mode, which will probably drive you crazy, so press control space and that turns on and off the highlighting of regions. He searches for it, but he can't find it. Control S is searching within the text of the screen, so you need to open the file. So Control G, 
to quit. To quit. Yeah. Right. Now open up. If you want to search for it, you can do open up your home directory. So Control X, Control F, Control. Sorry, it's Control X as an X-ray. Okay. Yep, and then F as in Frank. Now press Enter to open your home directory. So this looks more like it. Make it yeah, really right. wide, and now see how you have nine. So now you can click on that, and it will open up. There you go. Now you can do a Control X one. So what we need to do now is test our code and make sure that we're actually able to run a code block. So this code block is just going to print out which shell we're using, and we'll get into variables in a little bit. What we'll do is you'll go inside of this source block, go in here. Now, since I've got highlight on, I can turn that off, control space. And I'm now in the middle of this echo, and right in here, there's the equal signs, which are just saying make this a code block. We're going to type control C, control C inside of a code section, and we'll run that code. So control C, control C, and now it's going to say, would you like to run this code? It's going to always check with you, make sure it's okay. We'll type yes, because we really do want to run this code. And what you should see is a little bit of text appear afterwards that says pound plus results, and then it returns that the shell has actually bin slash bash. If you have that text, great, but if you don't, now, is your cursor inside of the code block? Yeah. Yep. No, you don't have to highlight. You just have to have the cursor inside. Now, Control C, Control C. Yes. Enter. Fantastic. Perfect. So, right there, you're in that block. You can type a Control L, and it will center the text. Perfect. OK, now go into that begin source. Now you can do a Control C, Control C inside of that source block. Type yes, you want, do you want to run it? Press enter. Awesome, that's great. I gave you a little example of what it should like, look like. The one thing to watch out for is there's these little commas inside of the source block that I have. That's trying to hide some stuff from org mode, so ignore that. You now have a working org babel setup inside everything. So we can run code from inside of org mode, and we're going to now use that to create a log file. And we're going to go use your Dropbox account finally. So we spent all that time working on Dropbox. We get to use it finally. So go inside of the begin source sh maker Dropbox. And what this will do is it's going to create a directory inside of your account called logs underneath Dropbox. So control C, control C. And it's probably going to complain at me because I did this earlier. Press yes. And it can't create because it already exists for me. But hopefully for you, it'll say nothing. And it might complain saying the code block returned nothing. If you saw that, you totally did the perfect thing. Anyone have something else weird? I'm sorry, would you say it said it produced nothing? Then you're great. You're oh. in great shape. <laughs> if it did nothing, basically, make dir doesn't print anything when it succeeds. It only complains. It's, it's a complainer. It doesn't tell you, like, good job. Yeah. It produced new output. So when make dir works, it's quiet. Okay. When it didn't work, it's grumpy and it starts talking at you. So like for me, it said, I can't make that directory. That's bad, but I know that's actually OK because I already have that directory. And I, I won't go delete it because I already have other log files that I don't want to delete. Now we have another little script, and you're going to have to edit this one before you run it. In here, it's going to. Use a little bit of tricks. We're not going to worry too much about the variables till later on today. But go into this script, and here it's going to define a variable called log. And we need to replace your username with your username. So in, that, in my case, that's going to be, in my case, that's Schwer. In your case, it'll be whatever your short CCOM Active Directory Windows account name is. And what this will do is it's going to set a variable with your log file. It's going to echo and print out to the screen a startup show all. This is going to keep org mode from collapsing your log file. And I think when you're beginning, you'll see show walls in almost all of my documents because pressing the tab key to collapse and hide some of the uh, sections in org mode is really clever, but it's also very confusing. You'll open up a document that you know is like a thousand lines long, and you'll see three lines, and it looks like you open the wrong file. So we're going to add show all. And then it's going to say that redirect thing. So if you guys remember from before, a greater than symbol and then a file name is going to write that data into that file. So it's going to write that one line into our log file. 
So if you've got that with your name, press Control C, Control C to run this block. Type yes. My error window has nothing in it, so life is good. And let's go open your log file. I'm going to split this so that I've got two with Control X and then the number two. And we'll do a Control X, Control F, and we're going to go find our log file that we just created. So it's DR, capital D, lowercase r, press tab. It should complete to Dropbox. You'll now have a directory called logs. And then there will be something called research tools, and then your last name like that. For each of you, it's going to be slightly different. So DR, a lowercase r, press tab. No, you're doing good. And then, so you opened up partially through where you're going. So if you look up there, I had Dropbox, Logs, and then Research Tools. Oh, I stopped using it. Control X, Control F, and then Logs, Slash, R, Tab. Press Enter. OK, you actually don't have a working Dropbox, so I'm going to fake it right now so you can keep going. So I just I made a Dropbox directory for you that isn't really Dropbox. Mm -hmm. So you'll we'll need to work after class to fix your Dropbox because Dropbox is not running. So now I've got my log file up here, guys. And it's blank and it's not very exciting. But if we look down below, and we're going to see a lot of this results stuff coming along. It likes to put it into a table, even though that doesn't necessarily make sense. So here, it took the output of the log file and just dumped the echo and then the cat of the file. So it stuck this text from the file right in there. You'll get used to that over time. It's a little weird. And what this file is, this is actually your homework assignment for the rest of the semester. Every day that you're in here, and it's a, it shouldn't be homework, it's actually in-class work. So hopefully by the time you've left here, you're done with this. What I want you to do is create a log entry for each day that you're in this class. And you're going to build up an org mode log where you can keep notes about things in this class that you want to know in addition to what's in the class notes. So this is a place for you to keep notes about anything in here that, that you want to add to what you need to know. And I've got some instructions in here. For example, we need to copy in the title, the author, and the email like you had in the homework too. So if you do a control space in here, scroll down a little bit, and then do another meta W to copy, and then a control X, O, and paste. And then you can go ahead and fill in your name and the, in the title, and your name and the author, and your email. This, these are notes that are meant primarily for you, and I'm making you do this so that you at least see it once. And you are welcome to, after this class is done, never do this again if you so desire. But if you like it, feel free to keep going. Now remember, if you want to kill to the end of the line, you can go to the beginning of the line here, press Control K, and it'll kill to the end of the line. Yep, now you can paste, Control Y. So you've collapsed a text section. Yeah. Yep. So if you see three dots after a section, it means you've collapsed it with a tab key, and you can uncollapse it with a tab key too. Okay. You can also do a meta x revert buffer if you want to just undo all your changes. Revert buffer is your friend. So then meta W for copy and control Y. Before it was only copying this, the email, it was copying begin SR. Is it because I had hidden it? Yeah, it was, yeah. It you had three dots line, after the dot line. org there. See, so scroll up a little bit. Okay. And just do control XO and press tab and then tab again. There you go. That's what you've done. You just collapse the. You've done a very fancy feature that gets in your way sometimes. Why, why is it in your org files? You have, you have the begin source, and then, but we're not copying. So you're building an actual one that the, the examples, if I put an example in there, I don't want to set my title. So I put it in a source block okay. saying this is org mode source. Okay. So you can actually talk about yourself almost in org. It's a little weird. It's one of those things, keep asking those kinds of questions. Those are great questions. Let's go ahead and create a log entry. So you're going to do one of these for each day that you're in class. The way you'll do it is a top level entry with just a star. You can type whatever you want for the text to describe that day. In my log entries, I tend to write what part of the country I'm in, in the United States, and what day it is. But you can say whatever you want. So we can say like research, tools, lecture, 09. And then I insert the date. 
so that I can figure out what day this happened on. And we can do a control C and a period to insert that date. And that's a full stop. And then you can press enter, or if your computer is on the wrong day, I noticed with your homeworks that by using virtual machines that are going to sleep, they don't always figure out what day it is. In a future lecture, I'll show you guys how to update the clock. But for now, just make sure you're on the right day. And if it says like Sunday, and this is probably not being taught during Sunday, and you can just click on the day that you want. What we can do then after this is tag it with control C, control C. Tags are anything you want them to be. They're a way to mark things without structure, and you can come back and grab all the entries with a particular tag. I use day for all my day entries. Control C, control C. And it marks that line with that tag? Yeah, you have to have the cursor on that entry line. The thing you gotta watch out for is control C, control C does lots of different things. And I don't actually don't know what it does until I go get somewhere and I need it, and I'm like, oh yeah, control C, control C. It's sort of like the do next thing. So like when we were on a checkbox and you wanted to check it off, you typed control C, control C. So for example, if I didn't, and then you press enter when you're done. But if I've been down here and I did, um, I'm working on an entry, and I type control C, control C, that toggles the flag. So it's the same keystroke in a different place has a different meaning. It's the next thing. That you, want to, um, you want to change this one? So control G one more time to quit. Oh, there you go. You're good. So then control X and then a, a B by itself for switch buffers. You can hit tab. It'll give you a list of buffers. And C, you probably want like nine, right? Yeah. You can either nine. just press nine and then tab and then enter. There's a question down here. If I type this, yep. the same result? Or no? If you type all the stuff, it's the same result. It's just text. It's just helping you format it nicely. Right can C. You can just do left square bracket, space, right square bracket. If you have an entry that covers two lines and you want to tag both of those, you know, like you're writing a paragraph or something. Okay. So the way a tag works is if you tag an entry, anything underneath it is included in day. So I can write this is included in day, an entry, that's included, that has the day tag attached to it. So anything in there inherits it. You can't uninherit it. Now what we can also say is, if we now, t now that we have a tag, if I press D and then tab, it will complete that tag. So once you've got tags, it'll actually start, so if we put dog in here for just a random one, now if I do a control C, control C, and I press a D and then I hit tab, it says there's a tag called day, a tag called dog, and it now knows about all your tags. So you can build up tags that are based on your research or things that you work on. You can have a tag like vacation. You can do whatever you want with your tags and later on search them the way you feel like it. So they don't have to be related to anything. You kind of mix and match as you go. In the HTML5, this is So you've seen those like blue boxes around stuff where it says things, right? That's what this is. So, um, so if I go to the class notes, see how there's a blue box around logging and testing? Mm -hmm. Those are tags. Does that help you search later? Or? Yes. Okay. So you can actually say, I'd like to see the document only with these tags showing. There's um, all sorts of fancy searching that you can do. We can also write code later on to grab tags out and do stuff. Um, you could get fancy if you're on a ship. You could tag things with what you're doing, what kind of job you had. You could tag them with a position tag, like you know, a particular survey. It's totally up to you how you want to do that. So that will actually be a part of your homework. And I said it was due Thursday. Why don't we go ahead and make that just be due Tuesday? I'll change the notes and re-upload them. For each day, you're going to need to create an entry for that day. And at the bottom of this entry, at the bottom of this page, there's actually a homework assignment. So if we go back to to here and we click on that. If you look at the table of contents, the bottom one says homework. That was basically to have you go and do journal entries, put them up on the server, and then let me see them. So make sure you guys are comfortable making entries, working with org files on your own. So there'll be a homework section at the bottom where it says to do, homework, deadline. I'm going to change this to be next week, so Tuesday. And a part of your homework is watch the videos where you'll go through exactly this stuff. 
you've now got the basics. If you watch the videos, they'll go through more of this again, creating entries, moving around the keyboard. Ask me questions. If you need more time and you need some help outside of class, just let me know. We'll set up a time. Let's go use what we've got now and create some content. So let's go and create a Google Earth KML of some actual data. In the next few minutes, let's see if we can get a ship track up on the screen. And we're going to use org mode with Babel as much as we can to run through the examples. So you get to see them. We don't have to type too much. And you can execute them as you go, see the responses, and see how it's going. Scroll down to this first entry where it's going to make a directory, and it's going to list what's in this directory. What we're going to do here is it's going to do a make dir, a dash p saying we're, we're going to make more than one directory at the same time. And we're going to make a class directory where we're going to do each of our class assignments in. And this lecture is 9, so we'll do it in there. So do a control C, control C in there. And then it's going to do an, a listing of what's in that, of what that directory looks like. So yes. What I've done here is the dash D with LS says don't go inside any directories. So show me the directory itself. So here's our home research tools, and then it went way off the screen. The log file is your notes. You, oh, write, you no, have to write them. It's not a logger. No. Uh, automatic logger. It is not an automatic right. logger, no. Uh, maybe a journal or work log? Good question. So this way, we're going to do a few examples, and you have to take on faith that they work, and then we'll get into the details as we get. You can do a control X0, or you can do a control X B to switch buffers. Press tab. And those are all the buffers you can have in there if you'd like. So you can pick like the research tools one, or you can do. OK, so the next one, we've created that directory. And what we can do is why don't we just go ahead and open it? We'll do a control X2, and then control X, control F, class slash 09, press Enter, and there's nothing in there. No. Control X, control F to find a file, yep, and then open up the directory. So class 09. So if you look up here, it's going to say where I'm at. So you should all now have a class slash 09. So this is a little bit of magic. And with org mode, it's going to be a little weird at first. But you can write in what you would type in the command line and run it from your document. And then if you want to rerun it, you just press Control C, Control C again in that code block, and it will rerun. I think this is a little mystical sounding. <laughs> Anything is a buffer, yes. Okay, so is this now a buffer and it's not saved? We have lots of buffers here. The question but is... Is this all saved in, in the original org file oh, no. that we opened? This one, this one that represents the class notes matches the file. So it matches this file right here. And you can save that and it will be saved. Uh -huh. This is also a buffer following a directory. And that's associated with nothing. It's associated with the directory, but you have to press G to see the directory change if it's updated. A buffer is like a thing in memory. And it yeah, I know it's like essentially what, what it is, but I don't know how it's... It's not, it's not taking on because it'll let me save the buffer. Yeah, if a buffer is attached to a file, you can save it. If you go up here, I bet you if you click in this window and do a file, it's not going to have save underneath there. At least I hope it doesn't. So if we're in this window and I do file, save is grayed out, and I'm not really sure what a save as is going to do. I don't really want to try that. That's okay. bad. All right. Some things you can do don't always make sense. Okay. In the past, we've, we've been running a lot of commands from the command line and typing them out. For example, we've used curl to go and get stuff. And what I've got here is a source code block that's going to change directories into this spot. And it's going to run these two commands. Are these commands, do you guys remember these? The curl command that we ran last time to go grab a URL. So we had, do you guys remember wget? So wget was the one that was driving me crazy. And I kept having problems. Curl does almost the same thing with a slightly different syntax that I seem to get wrong less often. Curl is going to go out, grab a URL, and save it to wherever it's at. So if we go in here and we do a control C, control C, 
and evaluate this code block. Press yes. And that's a dash O. That says output to the same file name as is in the URL. So does that actually do anything? We go over here, press G, and magically two files appeared in that directory. Control G is quit. So G is dured refresh. And to give you guys a sense of what this is like, if I copy this URL, this grab here, and I do a meta x shell, so now I'm in a terminal. So I'm in that same directory. I'm going to delete everything there, so I'm going to be careful here. Star.kml. So I can do this command like we've done before. I can go grab that file, and it will get the file. What I almost didn't, what I almost did on the screen, the save as of a directory. You can save that listing as a file, and so that saved it, and it looked like dured, but it was just a file. Yeah, so it wrote a text file of the directory listing. So it gets very confusing quickly. Uh, okay. If curl is not found, you need to open up a terminal and do. So this is going to install curl. So sudo space apt-get space install space curl. So, then after we got this open? so once you're in the dured mode and you've run the command, click in the dured window for the, the nine directory. So click inside that middle window. This is dured. And, yep, and then press G, directory edit. <laughs> um, so you can do like a Control X two to split your window. I did it. I yep. And then a Control X B to switch buffers. Press Enter. Is that where you want to be? So you're in the class directory. So scroll down to the nine. You can click on the nine there. Press Enter. Now do a G. Okay, did you run the command to go get those two files? Yep, we did the make dir, so go down one more. See that command right there with the two get files? Yep, so click in there. Not Yeah, don't click on the green link, but click anywhere else inside of there. Yep, and do a control C, control C. Type yes to evaluate that block. Press enter. Go to the other window, control X and then O, or yep. Yeah. Click, and now press G. Do a control X2 to split the window. Control X and then 2. And now open up that directory. So control X, control F. And see how this is uh, class 09. So type class slash 09. And now you have the two files downloaded. How can I change the screen? This one to be on button and this one to be on top. Is there any um, to There's probably a fancy key to do it, but I don't know it off the top of my head. It might be on the cheat sheet. If you, you can look on there, or you can do like a control X one, make one yeah. full and then split and then pick. There's a fancy key for everything, but I don't always know them. Yep. So if you're, remember in a directory edit mode, it's not going to go look at the disk again until you actually press that G key to refresh the view. Anyone not have the two files downloaded? We've now downloaded two files. These two files. I'm going to go rerun that so that I get those two files. Control C, Control C. Yes. I did a G to update. These files are little bits of XML. You don't have to go look at them. I'll just show you real quick. They're the beginning and endings of a KML file. And we're going to get into the full details of what a KML file looks like. But for today, don't think too much about what it is. It's just a container that's going to contain our ship track. And if we put the beginning in the front, we put our points for our ship track in the middle, and we stick the end on the back, then we'll have a file that we'll be able to view in Google Earth. And we'll spend a whole bunch of time building lots of KML throughout the semester. But for now, I just want you to be able to actually see one on the screen. The next set of instructions that we're going to do as we go through, we'll go grab those. We also need to get now the data that's going to go in there. So what I've done is I've taken a ship track from a construction ship off of Boston that was building a billion dollar natural gas terminal. And this is the track of the ship for a little while during the time it was building it. So let's go ahead and run this section. In the past, we grabbed the file ourselves, and then we ran B unzip 2. This is going to do it for us. So it's going to go and run. First, it's going to change into that directory. And then it's going to go grab that file with, with the curl command. And I'll put that crazy long file name. So it's going to go get a CSV. And then we're going to go look at that CSV like we've done for other files. It's going to be unzip to that file and uncompress it. So let's go ahead and run this block. So Control C, Control C, and yes. 
goes really fast when you're actually uh, on campus. If you press G up there, uh, you should now see 2007 bostonconstruction.csv. You can click on it if you want and open it up. It's a whole bunch of ship positions. So it's X, longitude, speed, latitude. I'll just tell you, you don't have to know this right now. This is a Unix UTC timestamp. It's the number of seconds since 1970. Uh -huh. <laughs> How's that for uh, funky? It's actually a really great number to have. It works very well. It's just kind of strange why 1970 is the beginning of time. But it makes working with time super easy for other examples. And we'll use it when we have a time slider. Why every time we use CD and the button? That's a great question why, why we have to CD and everyone. We could have put the org file in the class directory, but we didn't have the class directory yet. And then the two would work together in the same directory. But here our org file is somewhere else on the disk. The working directory for this script is always where the org file is. So we have to get to the working area and then go do some stuff to the files every time we start. See those two stars? You've been editing this file. You can just do a control X zero and make it go away. And it'll be in the background, you can ignore it. And then control X two and you can put something else in there. Control X two. And then just pick go under buffers. And pick whatever you want. Like you can pick the class 09, uh, this one right there. And then press a G. Yeah, if you edit a file, it's not gonna let you just let go of it real easily. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna save? And so now we've Downloaded and uncompressed this bunch of data. I got, we got yep. So it outputted the, I'm not sure why sometimes it outputs, but that's the curl command going and getting the file for you. Okay. Um, already exists. Okay, so you've run it twice. If you run bnzip and the second time you've downloaded the, the bnzip or the bz2 file and you've already bnzipped the csv file, there's now a csv file there and it won't uncompress and destroy the other file. It's, it's okay. I mean, now you have a BZ2 file and one without. Okay. And so open up your directory. Just click on the top and then select buffers and then select nine. Press G to update that, the letter G. And see how you have a csv.bz2 yeah. and a csv? Yeah, yeah. When it tries to uncompress that, it wants to overwrite okay. that file and it says, I won't do that. So we can't undo that? I, I wouldn't, if you want to delete a file, you can always Select a file, press the D key when you're on it. You see that D on the left there, it turns red. And if I press X, it's going to delete it. And you can also hit U and it will take away that delete flag. D for delete without the control. Now I've got a few commands. I'm going to do Control X1, make my window take over. And let's take a quick look at that file through scripts. So if we want to run the head like we normally would, see the first 10 lines? We can do a control C, control C in there, type yes. And note that I've got an example that I put in there. This is what you should see, something kind of like that. And now it's going to write the results like we have up here. Those results, it's going to write out the first 10 lines. Now it's going to do it in table form. It's often pretty good. You know, if, if you wanted to have this as a table, you could then make a nice table in your, in your uh, HTML file and you'd be good to go. So we've got some nice data. We can reuse that cut command that we've talked about in the past to grab the, the longitude and the latitude because we want to plot the x and the y of where this was. Here's a sample one to see what the cut would do. We use cut-d for delimiter. We're going to cut on the, the comma, so the comma separated values. Dash f says which fields do we want to keep. We want to keep the first field and the second field. So that'll be something like those first two for each line. And then we're just going to take the first 10 lines with the head command. You, you've been taking computer science classes. So we'll see that in Python. With command line stuff, people who were writing this cut command were not thinking like computer scientists. So they started counting with one. When we read the, when we read the file that showed the head, mm -hmm. how, did we, how would we have known that it was comma delimited had we not opened the file? We actually opened it up with, uh, with Emacs and took a look in there. That's what told us. I wouldn't have been brave enough to run the head command and try that. I, it might have spit junk back at us. Yes, but that's only a hint. 
you'll, you'll notice, especially with um, scientists, that that's only a hint, and sometimes it's completely and utterly weird. We have people here who think that uh, Simrad Kongsberg should have dot all. Some of them think dot all, some of them think dot mb and then a number. The extensions can be also whatever you want. So let's go ahead and run this cut just to see it real quick. Control C, Control C, and then a yes. We'll get a table with just the first two columns. So the longitude and the latitude. And it matches, this is what really is in the file. And then this is uh, Org Babel playing with it and trying to make a table for us. We're really lucky in this case because what KML wants for a line is it wants our header. So we have that header file that we, we're going to stick on there. And you're not going to look in there. You don't care what's in there. And we want x comma y and x comma y and then our tail. That stuff we're going to put on the end. So we're going to glue those three files together and we're going to have a valid KML file. And I know that doesn't mean very much yet, but I want you to see a working KML so badly. <laughs> what that's going to look like, here's a quick example of what it's going to basically look like. Google has these things called place marks. We're going to be building a place mark of, with a line, the coordinates, and this is what we're sticking in the middle. It's x comma y, a new line, x comma y, a new line, and on and on. This up here is exactly what we want. What we have down here is we have that same cut command, and we're going to use that redirection again, that greater than, to write it to a .xy file. .xy, I just picked that because it tells me that there's an x and a y. So let's go ahead and run this one. Control C, Control C. Type yes. It went off and did some stuff. I'll go back, Control X2, Control X B, and I'm going to open up the 09 directory, press the letter G, and I now have an XY file below my CSV. So Control X2 to split, and then Control X, and then a B by itself without a switch buffer. If it doesn't say 09, if it says 09, press Enter. If it doesn't say 09, press tab, and then a G to refresh the window. Time to make a KML that's actually a working KML, and let's go view it. So we scroll down just a little bit here. So in the past, we've just done this greater than, and that will always step on whatever is there. So it will delete anything that already exists, but we want to append. And there's a special thing for that, and that's two greater thans file name. This means append or add to. So it's going to keep adding on to the file. Every time you do one of these in the file name, it's going to overwrite and get rid of anything there before. If we do file name with two of these, it's going to add on to the end of that file and keep making it longer. So we're going to take our three files. We're going to first do an overwrite once to create a new file, and then we're going to append twice. So first we're going to take our header. So first we're going to cat, which is dump all the text to the screen, Google Earth line start .kml, and we're going to use the single greater than to create a new file called the, our 2007 Boston construction. And then we'll do a head. And we'll just take a thousand because otherwise these Google Earth inside of a virtual machine isn't terribly happy. And we'll give our our .xy file two greater thans and then our KML file. And then we'll take the tail, this last part here, the dash end dot KML, two greater thans and appended on the end. And that's going to stick together everything. And if you've done that, go ahead and open up your directory again, do a G, and see if you can see your file. So you're not you're in fundamental mode as opposed to a directory editing mode. So do a control X and then a K to kill. Press enter. And then control X K to kill. Press enter, type yes, and now you're in the real directory. You have, yeah, because you've opened up text files. Let's go ahead and, so I'm going to go run this command. Control C, Control C, yes. Control X2, and then Control X B, and then enter for 09. Hit G, and I now have a KML file. I'm not going to look in there. We're going to hope that it's right and it will just work in Google. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal, meta x shell. Hopefully it will open you up right in this directory. If not, you can cd tilde slash class slash 09. 
type Google dash Earth. So okay, go ahead and do terminal, it. Yeah, yeah go ahead, okay. open it. You can either open a real terminal or you can do it inside of Emacs with Meta X shell. If you open up Google Earth, don't click anything just yet. Then you need to CD, see how I have the CD command right above there? CD tilde slash class. Okay, terminal, I'll write it up here. Yep, Meta X shell. Or if you're totally forgetting and you're in the middle of like crunch time for work, you just open up the terminal, a real one, and just do that. This is meta. Yep. After about 2,000 times, maybe. You know, it's one of those, uh, it takes a while. If you start Google Earth, you're going to see a warning, probably. I don't see the warning, and it looks way better than it ever has. It's very weird. You're going to see an, a warning, and the text is going to be basically unreadable. I apologize. I don't know why my text suddenly is readable. That's pretty awesome. I wish I could reproduce that. Click no. You don't want to run in 3D mode because it may crash right now. The virtual machine isn't the greatest for graphics. I am going to click no. Uh, mine crashed. Oh well. I'm going to go try this again here real quick. I'll catch up to you guys. You can close the tip, the tool tip. Yep. Accessories, terminal, CD. So I have to go delete the dot Google or file class 09. But it looks so pretty. So now I'm going to say Google Earth, enter. So here I'm doing it from a regular old terminal. And I'm going to say no. Now I'm going to click the close to close the tooltip. And now you have a globe, hopefully. Do a file, open. Yay. CD into your home directory. So just type CD, enter or tilde, either way. RM space, now you gotta be very careful, dash RF space dot G, O, and then tab. And it better say Google Earth, and there better not be any spaces or any extra characters, and enter. And kaflui, all that's gone. Now c CD minus to go back to your old directory. I'm using a quick cheat here. There's a space between the CD and the minus. Okay, now type Google Earth and press enter. Uh, we'll do that next time. We'll do QGIS. And there is a ship track in Boston Harbor, which looks terrible, and it's going to look okay soon. So that's what you should see. Google Earth seems to be very unhappy with the virtual machine. I've seen it running on Linux and other machines in the building, and it runs great. I think it's just the virtual machine setup. The graphics are a little iffy. We're still trying to figure that part out. We'll use QGIS for a lot of our visualization for a bit. So now we have a ship track from some data. And we're going to keep working towards working through more data types, doing more uh, analysis, and we're going to do a lot of this stuff coming up in Python. So we're going to do a little bit more shell stuff on Thursday, and then we're going to start regularly using Python. Because Python is where we really want to be. The shell scripting stuff is just a means to an end, and a Python will actually do processing data but it's difficult to move files around and whatnot inside of Python without knowing the shell. Do watch those videos. They, I hope they help. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. You can hit pause, replay. Uh, hopefully I go slow enough you can see all the keystrokes. I try to say them as much as I can so you can follow along. Sometimes just seeing a couple times and being able to hit pause, take a coffee break, and come back to it might be helpful too because this is a lot of material. So I keep, a, I'm going to show you that work log again. So I'll pick one from last, last year. And I'm going to scroll down a little ways here. So my notes are a little crazy because I'm in the middle of stuff. But for example, here was me making a report from somebody I talked to. Here's me working with org mode. It's really however you want to make an entry. I talked to somebody at JPL. So I tagged it as the guy's name and JPL. I was working with some source code. So here's a source code that I wrote on working with their server. So it's really however you want to do it. If you want to include little code snippets, if you just want to write a paragraph about what you did for that day, if you want to write one sentence, it's up to you how you want to use this. As long as there's an entry per day that you're in this class, then I'm happy for grading. And however you want to use it after that is totally up to you. So if you want to take advantage of it, that's great. If it's annoying to you and it doesn't work for your particular work style, 
then don't use it other than making those entries for the homework. We can also include pictures down the road and I can show you how to add pictures into your notes. And by being in your Dropbox, it's already saved and you can get to it from your desktop. So by being in your, your Dropbox, you can go from your home computer or from wherever you are, go to the Dropbox website and it will be there. Um, and you can also install Dropbox on Windows without being an administrator. It won't work as well from what I can tell, but it should work pretty well. Uh, so you can always go to dropbox.com on your Windows machine, install Dropbox as a user, and get at those same files. And that way, we're starting to build up a place where we can keep stuff, and if you go back and work from a different computer, you can still see it. And feel free to use those menus the, uh, up at the top. There's a lot of keyboard commands we've been learning very fast in just a few classes. And so feel free to go back into, you know, if it's too much, inside of Emacs, feel free to do save as, save, edit, paste, you know, whatever works for you, especially when you're getting going, there's lots and lots of commands and they come with time, but don't, don't feel that you have to force learning all of them. That's why there's these cheat sheets and a highlighter for the ones that you want to remember that, that cause you trouble is a good thing. I definitely, when I was learning this, I put a highlighter on it, on the ones that I wanted to be able to notice really quick. And uh, the um, virtual machine that you loaded, I have um, OS 10, you know, for my own personal laptop. Is mm -hmm. that, will that work on there? Or do I have to get a different copy? Of it? No, it, you just have to have VMware Fusion. Oh, okay. Which academic? Uh, it used to be twenty nine. Now it's forty nine dollars or something oh, like that. Okay. They just released VMware Fusion four, and they charge us more for I don't know what. Three works great if you've got a copy of it. Yeah, there's academic pricing for VMware on the Mac. It's the one place you have to buy it is on a Mac. On Linux and Windows, VMware Player is free. If you end up doing it a lot, there's also um, VirtualBox, uh, which is free. It's from Oracle. Uh, that has a free version and a commercial version that you can use too. Would that run our virtual machine? It will not yet, no. Oh, okay. Now, for those of you who have it running off the end, there's a... Uh, a mode you can turn on, and that's called autofill. And then MetaQ. If you turn on autofill and you type in your long sentence, it's going to wrap it back into shorter text. So I can just keep typing, and these are just junk words, and it's going to keep going. But I'm going to do meta x auto uh, dash fill mode. So I've already typoed because I'm so used to auto-completion. If you press enter in here, you'll now at the bottom see fill. And if I press a space in that paragraph, it's going to wrap it for me. So that was meta x auto fill. And if you're in the middle of a paragraph and you want it to resort this paragraph, because maybe I have some horrible paragraph like that, and escape Q will reshuffle all that back into one. So it's meta X autofill, and then meta Q will re, re uh, blow that paragraph.